Hey there, and welcome to another lesson from Majingo. In this one, I want to talk about how we can use the batch filter in Twig to group up some data and then output it in a layout that we can more easily control. So the typical example here is that I wanna have three columns of data and I want to have markup that is open and closed based on a certain number of uh, pieces of data that are being displayed. Like let's say like a list of years, I want six years per column and then I wanna close the column and start a new one. But I want this all to happen dynamically no matter how many years are there. So let's take a look here on the computer about how we can implement that. Sometimes while outputting content, we have to adhere to certain markup that is part of the project. And in this case, we have columns here and each column is a set of uh, list items in an unordered list. And we can see that right here. We have a div here for each column and then an unordered list and then each date here is a list item. So this is pretty basic stuff and we can do this using conditionals in Twig where we just count where we're at and when we reach a certain count we need to then uh, close our markup and start a new column and a new unordered list and then continue on. And this is how the code is set up right now. So what I'm doing is I'm getting all entries from the news section and I want unlimited because I want to make sure I get everything and then I'm reversing them using the reverse filter so that I can uh, get them starting with the oldest first. And then I'm setting a variable called count and I'm setting it to zero. And I go into my for loop here and I'm using this group filter. Uh, this is actually documented in the craft documentation if you wanna check that out. It just allows me to group all the entries by the year of the post date. And now I take that count variable and I plus one it. So I, I increment it by one. And I say if count is uh, equal to one or equal to seven, which means we've gone through six iterations already, then I wanna open up a new div with the class of column and open up a new unordered list. And then I close my conditional. And now here I can just continue iterating. This is this top loop here, continue iterating with the list elements and outputting the years. Now, if it gets to six, the count gets to six, because remember it's incrementing on every loop, then we close the unordered list, and then we close our conditional. Now, if the count is six or it's the last uh, of the items and we use loop.last that is very handy in Twig, then we can close our div. We reset our count to zero because we want to start a new column, close our conditional, and close our for loop. Now this works, and it works perfectly. However, it's really not like very clean. I think it's very prone to error. When somebody jumps into this, you know, and starts changing markup and things, it, it could become complicated to understand why something broke and if it broke. So it totally works, but in Twig, there's a better way to do this. So let's scrap all of this and use the batch filter to make it work. Before we do that though, let's briefly touch on filters and the batch filter. I'll do more on filters in another video, but just really quick and basic. A filter in Twig is a little program that you send the variables data through in order to manipulate it in some way. Now you can use filters that come with Twig and there's also some filters that will come with your own CMS. Uh, in the case of this example here, we're using Craft CMS and there's some Craft CMS specific filters as well. So we're gonna use the batch filter to take our year archive and we're going to then chunk all of those years up into groups of six. Essentially we're gonna be creating multiple arrays and each array will have six items in it. We're gonna leave our all entries set here because we can keep using that, but we're gonna get rid of count and we'll leave our for loop here because we do need that. We can get rid of everything with count because we're not going to do the count anymore. And we can get rid of this conditional and that conditional. We're just gonna get down to our raw markup and get rid of that conditional 
and that count, and that conditional, and we have our for loop. All right, now we are back to square one. We are fetching our data here with all entries, and then we're iterating over that. Now let's step back really basic here for a second and see how we can get this to work. So I'm going to set years variable and I'm just going to use the operator here for setting a range. So we'll say we'll set the years to 1992 to 2002. Now I could create a, a manual array and just you know set explicitly all the different values, but this is much faster just for this test. Now this is just a proof of concept to see how batch works. Let's see what this gives us. If I do dump on years and then look at our page, then you can see dump outputs. Here you can see uh, an array. So we have an array from 1992 to 2002. There's 11 items in the array. All right, so we know that that creates an array. So now, if we loop over this and then use the batch filter, let's see what we get. For batched years, in years, so here, right? And then we will pass that through the batch filter, and the batch filter takes two arguments. There's the size of the batch, which is required, so like six, which is what we want. And the second argument is for fill. If there are extra items, we can say like, you know, empty or something like that. And this will fill those empty slots up to the batch limit, which is six, with whatever we put in here. But we're gonna leave that empty for right now. All right, let me close my for loop. Now in here, I'm just going to dump batched years and take a look at what we have in there. So if I reload that, now you can see in batched years, I get an array with six items right here, and then an array with five items. So here it's kind of hard to see but here is the first array with six items because we're batching into six items and it creates another array with five items because there's 11 items total and it tries to create the, as many as it can up to the limit. Now, if I added in our second argument with like say the string of empty, we can see how that works. It just adds on an extra item called empty. So now we have six here in this array and then six in this array. And that's how it works. It just allows you to fill out the remaining items uh, if, you, if the actual data has reached its limit. We're going to remove that because we don't need it. All right, so now we know what batched years outputs. All right, now we're gonna iterate over the array of batched years. So say four year in batched years and we'll have all of our markup in a second. Let's put in year like that, and then end four. Now let's see what we have. So we reload, there we go. Now we have our dates all outputting properly. Now you can't tell that these are batched because the markup doesn't give any indication of that right now, because I don't really have any markup, I'm just outputting the variable. But they are batched because we confirmed that a minute ago by looking at the array using dump. All right, now let's integrate this into our actual markup and complete the process of going from all that ugly conditional based code to using batch. All right, so let's work on this code now. So we're getting all entries here, and then we're going to create an array with all of the years. So let's do that by setting years collection to an empty array. And then here in this four year entry years in all entries and we're grouping inside of here, we can now set 
years collection equals years collection we're going to merge those basically we're just going to drop them into the array like that and we're still prepping our data here so we have that now now we can move on to the actual markup for the output. So we do four years in years collection. So we're doing years because right now we're getting each individual array, right? So we're doing four years in years collection because we're batching them here into six six items per batch and we can leave our div class column our unordered list and the only thing we have to iterate over here is the list item so we say four year in years and we can close end four like that and here we're going to output year and year like that to get the links and then we have at the end of our unordered list and our div, we have this end for here. All right, so let's save that and take a look. So if I reload, now you can see I have it all nice and laid out just like before. We have six in each. This gives me three columns with one left over. Let me get rid of this other stuff here, our test markup just like that. So now if I go ahead and use our second argument in batch to say um, empty like that, that will fill out the last spots with empty. But of course we don't want that. We only want that to be years as they elapse. So let's go ahead and remove that. There we go. Reload. And there we go. So now we have our news archived by year in six columns. And if I inspect this, you will see that we have our column, our UL, and then our list items, and then a closed column and a new column, a new column, and a new column. Now all of this is without any messy conditionals or anything like that. So let's review the code again. We start by just prepping our data. This has nothing really to do with batch at all, but we do want to prep our data. So we uh, set all entries to all of the entries in the news section and reverse it so we get the oldest first. We set an empty array to years collection, and then we loop over all entries. We group them by year, and then we merge each year into the array called years collection that we created up here. And so we have our data. Now we're ready to iterate over the years collection. So for every batch of six years, we have this years variable available to us. And then we iterate over that, which is an array. We say four year in years. So for, ev for every of these batches that we created, let's iterate over that and create our list items. We get the opening and closing div for the column and for the UL automatically based on batch. So that's what batch does for us as it iterates over. Now, because we're iterating over a new array of years each time, that's why we get the year batched and our markup is iterated over as we expect. And all of this without the need for any conditionals. Pretty clever way of approaching it. Thanks for watching this lesson and for following along with me. If you want to learn more about Craft CMS, you can go to majingo.com slash craft essentials. Now, I've put together a bundle of my craft courses so you can get all of the learning materials you need in one easy course bundle. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.